Welcome to the Serious Shift Blogcast. We have only one question. What does Serious Shift mean to you? To answer that and much more, here's your host, Dennis Mosley-Williams. Hi, I'm Dennis, and welcome back one more time to the Serious Shift Blogcast. It's very nice to have some time with you again this morning, and I hope wherever you are, life is treating you kindly. I am feeling especially good. I'm in um, New York City for MDRT Edge 2019. It's their second annual conference. I was asked to speak last year and I did and they invited me back. So pretty hard not to be feeling good about myself this morning. My question for you today is, are you doing anything (laughs) with these suggestions I'm making about your business and how to just get a little bit better? You don't have to have, you know, to burn the whole thing down. It's about just changing some of your daily behavior just a little wee bit to be better to yourself and to get the results that you're looking for. So none of the things that I'm asking you to do in any of these so far have been to get you to work harder, you'll notice. It's actually just getting you to work a little bit more focused on certain things, to let some other things go, and to shift your um, your attitude a little bit about yourself and the approach you take. So today we're going to do, this is the third of five blogs in this series, and I'm going to do a really quick recap of the first six little suggestions I've made before I do seven, eight, and nine today. Okay, so here's what they've been. The first was really simple. Ask for help. Okay. As small business owners, entrepreneurs, creators, confidence isn't our problem. We all can get, we can bring our idea as far as a very long way. But accept that eventually you hit a point of, you know, call it diminishing returns, call it resistance, call it what you like, where you get to the point where you're like, fella, you're not going to get this done. You don't know what you're doing. Ask for some help. It takes a long time to figure it out on your own. There's all kinds of experts. There's books to read, people to talk to, et cetera, et cetera. Ask for help. Do you know how many people hire us and say, um, oh, I've wanted to hire a coach, so to speak, for years? Okay, so maybe, maybe the problem was, oh, I couldn't afford it until now. Maybe, but usually that's not the story. Usually it just takes us a long time to accept we have to ask for help. The second was to say no more often. All I'm going to say about that is, that's critical. Say no to tricky clients. Say no to work that doesn't quite fit. Okay? You got to learn to say no, particularly when you shift to the experience economy. Then it's it's really about staging the right experience for the right client. Say no more often. It's critical. The third is to use lists. It's very, very simple, but it's incredible. I was mentioning to you that I use my CRM. Every email I send, I said schedule a follow-up task. So... What it does is not only does it keep me more organized, and it'll keep you more organized, it helps you preserve your mental energy. Whether the, you realize or not, keeping track of all these things, it's exhausting. Just use a list. Give yourself a break. Speaking of breaks, number four was to take breaks. Okay, I, I said something like productivity isn't measured by your, like for how long you're willing to sit at a desk working. Productivity is measured by your how much you can get done without sacrificing your health okay so you absolutely need to take breaks through the year okay that was that was by the way tip four so that would be in you know the last the last blogcast if you want to dig into that one schedule holidays schedule days away from work schedule activities when you are at work just to give yourself a little clarity okay it's really important burnout is a real thing and it's a really easy thing for all of us as humans to ignore we just figure if we keep if we keep working really hard, that that's somehow more noble, that we'll push through it, but we won't. And if you don't listen to your body, your body will hand you a massive nervous breakdown. (laughs) If you're not going to pay attention to burnout, your body will take that choice away from you. So watch out. Then I said you should be focusing on things, specifically the activities, those activities that do you and your business the most good. Delegate everything else, which as I say this out loud is almost a cousin of asking for help, isn't it? right focus on those three things I told you I do three things I talk in rooms full of people I talk on the telephone and I write stuff that's all I do every other thing I delegate with exception of buying my plane tickets which I wish I could delegate but it's such a you know complicated mess that I can't so I have to do those two and then the last thing I said was television's garbage so stop watching it and I told you about something I do that I realized I was doing quite by accident, which is I meditate every day for an hour. Now, if you would have asked me before I figured this out, Dennis, do you meditate for an hour every day? I would have said, no, I've never meditated for an hour collectively in my entire life. However, turns out that's not true. Yeah, I do. 
Every night I go for a walk with my dog. It takes about an hour. And I listen on my headsets to podcasts or TED Talks, etc. For one hour, I don't do anything but walk, get exercise, decompress, feel good, pay attention to the beautiful world around me, and listen to other people's wonderful words and thoughts in my head. Do the same. Now we're going into the seven new ones. Here's the first one, number seven. Okay, new terra incognita here. Do some heavy lifting. Okay, set more ambitious goals for yourself. Once you get this business tucked in and you're focused on using your lists and focusing on your right activities and asking for help and doing all of this wonderful stuff, you got to kick it up. You need two or three things that you're going to do this year that you don't get done in a day, that you don't get done in a week. Something big. Okay, I don't know what that's going to be necessarily. Certainly, I've been kicking this book around of mine for a long time. I've talked about making a 15 minute movie for a really long time about this business and what I think about it and the life of the entrepreneur. I don't know, but something big, okay, something you can dig into, something that will bring you a lot of meaning. Maybe it's a big client event. Maybe it's uh, maybe you're redesigning your website. Who knows? Okay, but set more ambitious goals for yourself. Okay, number eight. This is more of a tactics thing. Designated email time. Don't, I learned this from uh, Shane Parrish and the Farnham Street blog. Don't check your email first thing in the morning, which is something I used to do. I'd roll out of bed and I'd immediately open my inbox. Now I don't do that. I wake up in the morning and I work. I'm fresh, I'm smart, I'm thinking, I'm creative, boom, and I blast it all out. Later on in the day, around 11, that's when I open up my emails and take a look. Because that's just administrative work. That's me answering questions and responding and delegating. Could you please send this to so-and-so? Could you please do this? Could you please do that? Okay, yes, I can. Yes, I will do this. No, I can't do that. Yes, I would like to talk to you about it. Please work with this person to schedule a time. I do that kind of work because I don't quite want to call it mindless, but it certainly doesn't involve my heart. It doesn't involve my my energy, okay? So, so there you go, designated email times. And I've got some other things to say about that, but mostly all of these chirps and chimes and buzzes and things, I read somewhere that every time you're distracted, ding, your phone dings, or you're to let you know you push notification here, there, anywhere else, that your IQ drops by like 15 points and takes 15 minutes to get it back, okay? Meaning you're a little bit more dumb than you normally are for about 15 minutes. I have this little rule that I follow, which is every time you waste 15 minutes, okay, or rather every time you do it 10 times, which you don't think, you know, which is really easy to do, it costs me a ski day. That's the way I look at it. When I'm at work, I want to move a ton of dirt. I don't pay attention to news or, or anything that's not productivity during my work day. At the end of the day, I often go home and then say, okay, so what happened in the world today? <laughs> then I pay attention to news. I have no idea what's been going on all day. Number nine, reward yourself. Okay, there's two kinds of things here. I believe, as I said previously, that every person needs something fun that they're looking forward to every 60 days. Something that ideally involves a bag, leaving your city. Doesn't necessarily require an airport, but you have to leave your life behind and go do something else. Connect with some friends, have some fun, etc. Okay, so reward yourself is two things. One is work towards vacations and family time. Okay, I just put some dates in, it's presently October. I put a whole bunch of dates in March the other day and then I immediately booked a ski trip at the end with my family to make sure I wouldn't lose that. That's a nice reward, vacations, holidays, and you know, take time off when your kids are out of school and all that great stuff. But the other is through the day, okay? So what I often do is if I'm sitting working, I'll say to myself, okay, I'm going to blast away on this, shut the whole world down, put my headphones on, and I'm going to work on this for literally 45 minutes. I am going to blast this thing out. I'll, I'll introduce a deadline to myself and I'll say, get this done in the next 45 minutes. And at 45 minutes when it's finished and I ship it over to Susan, I'll make a beautiful coffee. I'll go sit in front of my office at the picnic table that's on the lawn and I'll just sit in the sunshine for 15 minutes and feel time slow down, okay? That's it. Do the same. Review these last few blogs. They're very, very important. They're little tiny things that I use, that I've learned from others, that I feel have preserved me and served me as an entrepreneur, small business owner for now a very long time. 
As always, thank you so very much for your attention. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for your attention and thanks for your comments and sharing the blog. It means a lot and I'll talk to you soon. We hope you enjoyed the Serious Shift blogcast. We would love any suggestions, feedback on topics, ideas, or challenges that may have you feeling stuck. Also, please leave a five-star review wherever you are enjoying this content. It helps Dennis out tremendously. One last thing, if you would like to take your game to the next level, go visit SeriousShift.com and download for free our latest white paper. It will seriously begin to help you shift. On behalf of Dennis and the team, see you next episode. Music